Good evening, Hunslet and Riverside Ward. It's Councillor Paul Ray here with this week's Ask Paul Live. Uh, I hope you've had a great week so far and that uh, you've been able to uh, stay safe and well in these challenging times. Now, uh, as normal, we'll wait about a minute just for people to start joining the feed, um, just so that they can get going. What I will say is uh, this feed is slightly shorter this week. Uh, for the last kind of eight weeks of doing this, we kind of tail off after about 45 minutes. So we're going to actually make them 45 minutes long, just kind of make sense to do that. Um, while we are doing this, uh, I will just make sure that I've got my comments going live so I can actually see what you're asking me as we do it. And um, Thank you to the first couple of people that are joining us. It's great to see you. Uh, I just want to copy that. Brilliant. So um, what I'm going to start off with is just a, a very kind of quick update of where we are as um, Lee City Council in terms of the uh, coronavirus situation. What I would say is the literally the latest update literally came just before I went live. So I've not read through it fully. So you're going to see it at exactly the same time as me. I'm going to bring that up uh, now. So as of... Uh, 9 a.m. on the 14th of May, so this was yesterday. Uh, in Leeds, uh, we had, let's have a look, 525 confirmed uh, COVID-19 related deaths since the 27th of March. 513 of these happened uh, to Leeds residents, so people who were residents of the city. Uh, 296 of those deaths sadly happened in hospital. Uh, which makes about 56% of them. 200 deaths uh, happened in uh, care homes, uh, which is 38% of, of the deaths we have here in Leeds. And 2% uh, happened in hospices, and 4% happened uh, in people's own homes. Now, this is the data that's recorded as people dying of COVID or COVID-related. The reality is, is the uh, ONS uh, figures suggest that it is probably higher across the UK, but these are the official stats. And I think as was highlighted in the government press conference today, we have unfortunately seen a slight uptick of uh, virus infection rates. Last week for every person infected uh, with the virus, around 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 people were infected by them. That's now raised to 0 0.7 to 1. So basically that means that the virus is starting to stabilise in terms of the number of people that have the virus. It has also been a really uh, busy week for the council to trying to absorb the huge amount of information we've got from the government in terms of what they're actually expecting. I, I think probably like many of you, I was sat expecting quite a lot from the Prime Minister on Sunday uh, and actually probably not a huge amount in reality has changed. Uh, we have seen a, an uptake uh, of people uh, returning to work, but actually only marginally. And I think, there's, to be fair, there's a, a lot of confusion out there, uh, particularly in the school sector at the moment, as they prepare for what might happen on the 1st of June. Uh, so some just broader updates from us at the Council. Uh, as you'll be aware, uh, all the City Council uh, parks uh, have opened their car parks again. So these are council run uh, recreational parks. We have opened our car parks again and towards the end of this uh, month and in between the next month we'll look to open some of the other facilities but the playgrounds and the gym equipment are still completely uh, off bounds. Um, we've also uh, embarked on a rollout of um, social distancing appropriate pathing. Uh, so uh, very large areas, you'll now start seeing uh, temporary footways, markings. Uh, we have just launched literally, uh, again, about an hour ago, so I've not had a chance to put into my Facebook yet, a actual whole list of, uh, well, it's a website where you can put your suggestions where we might have issues with social distancing on public footpaths and for cyclists, etc. So when I do put that up online a little bit later, I would really, really strongly suggest that you do put your ideas down because however long this lasts now, we are probably going to need to be looking at some form of, of safe social distancing on our public footpaths, etc. for quite a while. 
Um, other than that, uh, there is quite a lot of updates I got just before this went live. As I've said, I the, the update came uh, just before this went on. What I am going to put into the comments now, though, if you will bear with me two seconds, is just the links to the last two updates on my website. As you can imagine, there's a huge amount of information that's come out in the last week. Uh, even more, as I've said, to come out uh, since starting this, or just before this live feed. So if you will bear with me, I'll literally bog those into the comments for you now. So, um, uh, hello Jim, hello uh, Leonard, hello uh, Brenda, uh, hello to anyone else that has uh, joined so far while we've uh, started with this. Um, so just a couple of quick uh, questions that I've received uh, while um, getting ready for this this week and then we'll go on to uh, your questions on the, the live feed. I've just put those two links to those two uh, substantial updates I've done uh, this week. Uh, so in terms of the business discretionary fund, uh, the council literally got the information uh, last night and our officers are now literally rummaging through that guidance now to understand what they need to do. So the business discretionary loan uh, is a, an additional loan for those businesses, particularly smaller businesses with small numbers of employees or who don't have their own uh, rateable value because they maybe rent their space. Um, from someone else so they don't get a separate rate value so they've missed out on that support it's, it's directed at them now we do have quite a lot of small business people with uh, those issues uh, here in uh, this ward and across the city so uh, that's a really big one and watch out for that over the next couple of days uh, as I think I mentioned uh, on a, a post uh, this week um, our tips are uh, open again uh, they are a booking service only, so obviously please make sure you go to the Leeds website. Um, I think I posted it on my Facebook before, but literally just put search for Leeds away sites and it'll come up on Google. Um, you'll need to book, but we are doing that. That has actually worked quite successfully. We've not actually had as many issues. Um, from next week, we're starting uh, bulky waste collection from people's homes again. Uh, that will be booked in the same way as it was booked before online or over the phone. Uh, we are looking to do that, well sorry, we are going to be doing that free of charge for the moment, uh, particularly to support those people who are isolated at home and who've got bulk waste to get rid of. We know a lot of people have decided to do DIY while they've been stuck at home and, and do improvements to their home. And towards the end of this month, the week in starting the 25th, Brown Bing Collections restart. Now, some of these routes are actually going to change. So it's really important that uh, you keep an eye on the uh, app if you've got it or the website. For those people who are going to have route or day changes, you will get uh, a letter in advance. Uh, we were planning to do this route change anyway when we restarted Brown Bin Collections uh, weeks ago. But um, you may have a different date compared to what you did. So I'm going to take a moment now just to look at some of the questions that come in the live feed. And then there's a couple of more things I'll, I'll go through if I've not got many questions. So let's have a look. Uh, I don't quite know what you mean by that, Leonard. Um, actually, I don't even think I can... A scamdenic. All right. Um, what I would say, Leonard, I mean, when you close the entire global economy uh, and you are literally borrowing billions, hundreds of billions of pounds... Uh, I don't think it's a scam. I, it, it would be the most massacistic government I have ever come across in my entire life. And I studied uh, politics and, his, and history at university for my sins to, to have done this to its own nation. I, it's definitely real, uh, I think, is to, to put it uh, politely. Um, so that's fine. Have we got any other questions? Uh, What's up question? Are Lee City car park still free? If you're referring to Leeds City Council parking bays and uh, non-enclosed parking facilities, yes, it is still free of charge at the moment to park in them. Uh, we are now enforcing the normal rules of the road, as it were, so double yellow lines, exclusion zones around schools, etc., as we were before. To be fair, those rules were still in place, but they won't be getting enforced much because we just didn't have the staff. Things are improving to that degree, so yes, you can still park free of charge 
in elite city council uh, parking bay etc but all the normal rules of the road apply double yellow lines etc they they stay as they are um have a look any other questions coming in okay so i've got no questions coming in at the moment so do you know i'm gonna ask you a question uh dear viewer uh, who are watching how do you think um the new guidance has landed did you find it confusing was there anything you weren't sure about uh do you think it was crystal clear do you think it was as clear as mud do you think it was somewhere in between what do you think uh and i know what my personal opinion is which was it probably could have just been an update on the roadmap rather than change the slogan but what do you think i'd, I'd be really uh, eager to hear while i wait for some more of your questions Ooh, the anticipation Actually, while I'm waiting for you to answer that one as well, I'm going to put in a, a, a pitch about something I am going to be doing from next week. So for those of you who regularly get my alerts on Facebook, uh, you'll notice I put a event up next week, next Thursday at six o'clock, uh, which is going to be a guest Q&A. Uh, so similar to this, but with someone else, so you're not having to deal uh, uh, with just me. Uh, next week, it will be your local MP, Hilary Benn who will be taking your uh, questions that have been sent uh, in advance. I'm going to put a link to uh, that into the comments in a moment. Um, and basically, you'll be able to ask him and, and challenge him questions. So I'm just going to get that link now. So actually, you can uh, maybe have a look at that while you're watching this. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing these every two to three uh, weeks in terms of these guest Q&As. Simple reason being... You know, I'm not the only councillor in Leeds and I'm not the only person that makes decisions on uh, your behalf. Um, so uh, I put that information there about the Q&A with Hillary uh, next week. Again, submit your questions in advance uh, or uh, ask them on the live feed. We'll be doing half and half. So, yeah, really interesting. A uh, bit of divided uh, opinion here. Some thinking was clear, some thinking was uh, less so. Um, I think that's probably the honest view most people have had. I think not much changed actually, uh, and I think everybody's expectations were that there was going to be a lot of change. It's pretty much as was, but with a a wee little bit more exercise. Um, one of the questions that we did get, uh, I have got through quite a few times this week, is about uh, face coverings. So, what the government has specifically said is that if you are in an enclosed space where social distancing can't really take place, some smaller shops, public transport if you're having to use it, uh, etc., then they recommend that you use a non-medical face cover. And I think the important reason for that is non-medical is because obviously we want the medical ones to go to the care sector and to the NHS. Um, but really important that, you know, that, that has now been said that if you are in enclosed space, um, you should look to do that, uh, Ricky. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, with the uh, the the fact that things were getting stretched, I know the police of uh, the regular means we had with them were always um, quite a stretch as how to enforce things. I think it's going to be harder to do so now, uh, but we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, I mean, it's already troubling that the R rate, the the uh, reproduction rate of the virus, the spread of the virus rate has gone up in the last week from the data they've got. And we've just got to hope that that's uh, a blip. So, Jim, you've got a question here on street cleaners. Now let's have a look. Uh, can I see I'm just going to open up the question here. It's a little easy to see on my phone. Uh, Can the street cleaners uh, clean and do we do the path cyclists? Um, so we're not street cleaning at the moment other than on on actually things like actual cycle paths and uh, major roads. Simple reason, a lot of our the drivers who drive those are actually helping the refuge service. Um, in terms of the M621 though, I will, uh, uh, I'll have a look at specifics around that, see if there's anything we need to look at. But... We are basically saying that most road cleaning is not happening at the moment unless it's deemed that it has to be done for safety issues. That is looking like it will probably change quite quickly as we get back to a normal refuge service 
and we can start redeploying staff that have been helping other services back into the cleaner neighbourhoods. Um, has had so when you say they've had visitors to the to the bridge, Rick, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Uh, I'm interested in what you mean by that when you clarify it. Right. So uh, just while I wait for some more questions to come through, some uh, more uh, ones here. Let's have a look. Um, let's have. Oh no, I've had some more questions come through anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, so Brenda, the Devon, the, uh, how to put it, the uh, the impromptu festival uh, on uh, the park. So, what has been established? This is being this is a UK wide thing. It's uh, a group linked to uh, from the information I've read, and I stand to be correct if it's not the case, uh, linked to Britain First, um, which is a a political grouping to the right. Um, very much following the similar kind of fray, uh, actions that have happened uh, with some anti-lockdown groups in the United States, to be fair. Um, the police have issued a statement, uh, I should have had a link to that to put into the comments actually, about how they will look to do that. You know, it's probably not the best idea to tell everybody to turn up to a major park on a really hot day and ignore social distancing and have a bit of a party. Um, now the new rules say you can go to the park, you can spend unlimited time there, you can sunbathe, you can meet one other person from your household as long as you are staying socially distant. Um, but I think it's going to be an interesting day because it's, uh, it's 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 Woodhouse uh, Moor as well and uh, Hyde Park that they've put these posters out for. Um, I think the police are aware that they're going to have a busy day and actually from a public health point of view, particularly the evidence is showing that the the reproduction rate of the virus is already starting to peak after a, w a week of relaxed activity. It is concerning, to put it politely. Uh, but the police have, have, have got an operation. They've not told us the specific details, at least not to my level of counsellor. The, the probably more senior counsellors have probably seen some information about what the police intend to do. But they, they, it's not been brought down to our level other than that. They are planning to do something to try and maintain it. And as, as I've said, they put a public statement out, which is in the press. Uh, let's have a look. Down by the Bay House pub in Hunslet, someone has dumped a trolley down there. There are two Aldi ones. Right, I'll, uh, Simon, I'll report that over to our Cleaner Neighbourhoods team and get them to get in contact with the uh, trolley collectors. So all the major supermarkets, uh, there's a couple of trolley collection companies that collect them for them generally so i'll get that passed on uh jim no thank you very much for that i will uh ha ask clean the neighborhoods to have a look at that cycle way if it is messy uh then we will look to get it cleaned because we are prioritizing uh active travel uh routes at the moment uh particularly as we're uh, doing a bit of an expansion of that as we come out of uh the more severe parts of the lockdown uh, in the near future um Right, ah, Ricky, yeah, it, I, I take it this is at the bridge in the island down near uh, H2010 on the riverside. Uh, the police uh, are aware of this, to my knowledge, but again, it's going to be very hard for them to enforce it if it's... Basically, if it's one person and then there's a person two metres away from them and then they're all in a grid of two people, then it's, it's not going to be an issue. So the guidance is pretty much, if you can go out with a member of your household, that's fine. If you go out and there's two of you and there's one of them, that's against the rules. If you go out and there's two of them and two metres away, there's another two people, that's against the rules. What they've said is it's one person from one household and another person two metres away. So it's not exactly the clearest in the world. So as long from an enforcement point of view for the police... If it's two people and they're clearly the, the same household and there's people more than two metres away from them, they're not going to do anything. Uh, if it's uh, more than two people together and it's they'll maybe ask a question in the same household. If it's two people and then one person two metres away and they're engaging in conversation, they're probably going to look at that and say, you're not following the rules. This is the difficulty of the situation we're in, uh, particularly for the police. They've got this very 
steadfast with this rule, which is one person from one household can talk to another person from another household in a public space as long as they're two metres apart. I, I have absolute sympathy for the police as they have to try and enforce that uh, going forward. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, uh, exactly, Ricky. As, as my probably garbled explanation tried to make, the enforcement's going to be absolutely insane. Uh, it's it's not great. Um, let's have a, look, a few more questions. Uh, this one's come on, on instant message to me. Um, I hear ice cream bags about. Are they allowed to serve ice cream? Um, my understanding is no. Uh, the ice cream van shouldn't be out at the moment. I'd love an ice cream. Um, we've not we've not removed the restrictions as far as I'm aware on uh, ice cream vans. So unless something's happened and I've not noticed and it's not in the briefing I've just read or any of the briefings I've read in the last week, I'm pretty sure that anyone serving ice cream from an ice cream van is now technically breaking the law because their licenses were suspended for that during the COVID process. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say to that one. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I definitely like a 99 as well, uh, Ricky. Uh, I, I, I could kill a chocolate flake right now. Um, right, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Jim, I'll, I'll definitely uh, pick that up for you. Not an issue at all. Uh, let's have a look. Now, just while I'm doing this, uh, I have had quite a few questions about people asking where they can get a collection of all the, the advice in the city. And I, I do know that I regularly post this, but I'm just going to post into the comments uh, the link to the Lead City Council COVID information site for uh, residents and for uh, businesses. So all the information the council's getting, we are collecting and putting onto those pages. So please do... Uh, look and utilise those as needed. Um, now, um, just while I'm waiting for some more questions to come through, just another kind of question from me uh, to kind of uh, you. As you've probably noticed over the, the um, last week, I've been doing a different type of posting on my Facebook page, um, some more branded stuff. Uh, and I, honestly, I'd like your feedback. Does it look okay? Is it too much? Uh, do you like that I'm repeating posts rather than just putting posts at once? Um, do you like the idea that you've been asked more questions about what you have in the world? Because again, I, I'd be really keen to understand whether or not you're getting value from it because it, it does take a little bit of time. And if it's working and it's good, happy days. If it's not, then um, I'll save my time and do some other casework. So what's your thoughts on how I, I, I've been putting different types of posts onto the Facebook page? I'll look forward to your comments. So while we've been waiting uh, for that, I have had another question. Uh, this is in relation to uh, Leeds Housing. Sorry, this one's come through on WhatsApp. So at the moment, uh, we are still not processing um, Leeds uh, housing bids for council properties. Uh, the bidding process is still there for private lets. Though to be fair, a lot of private uh, letting organisations have reined back on what they are doing. Um, obviously, the aspiration is to get back to normal service as soon as possible. But again, with the travel restrictions, there's not a lot of movement in the rental market. What we are doing is we are doing um, emergency rehousing where necessary. But again, that's not always possible in council properties uh, and there has had to be a degree of uh, utilising uh, hotels occasionally where necessary if it's a real emergency. So uh, we're not doing standard leads housing uh, jobs at the moment, but we are doing emergency uh, rehousing where necessary. And we've actually done quite, a, we've been quite successful getting a lot of people off uh, who are street homeless in terms. We've still got a, a group of people in the city centre predominantly, who are, but they are a, a group of people who have some real, real difficulties. Uh, and the, the provisions, even the additional provisions that have been provided just haven't been enough for them. Uh, great, Brenda, thank you very much for sharing those posts. I think it's, it's really uh, good to know that they are. I mean, I'm always wanting to make sure I'm as available to you, the people I'm elected to represent as possible. 
Uh, choose carriage, great to know. It's nice that people like that they get asked stuff because uh, I don't have all the answers uh, and I won't pretend that I do for a second and you spend more time going about your community uh, than I probably do. Um, Gareth, uh, the construction worker at Leeds Dock. So, uh, we don't know his honest answer. So, uh, Leeds Dock, uh, Allied London, um, have put in a application for a license for a uh, new bar and cafe. Um, again, the link to that's on my Facebook page and uh, on my website. Um, and what normally happens is they put in an application for the building. So where it's a bespoke bar, they put the application in for the building first. Um, they tell planning what it is. We look at it all uh, and then we make a decision as to whether or not the building is suitable, bearing in mind the purpose it's being designed for if it's a bespoke building. Um, and then they apply for licensing. They've applied for licensing, but not applied for planning at the moment. So I have raised it to our, my colleagues in the planning department to find out what's going on. Um, the relationship with the Dock and Lee and Ally, uh, Allied London uh, as, as the owners of Leeds Dock and the Canals and Riverside Trust is a complicated one. Uh, it could be that they're just doing survey to see what they need to do for planning before they put in planning. The honest answer is it's a bit of a, a mix up, but uh, I am aware of it. Uh, it has been sent off, um, and I wasn't sorry. I wasn't aware the holes were still there. Are, are they are they actually open? Are they uh, do they have some sort of barricading around them, or are they actually open because that's a safety issue in itself? Um, I no one had told me that the holes were still exposed, but just that they'd actually done some holes. So I will pick that up, Gareth, uh, and, and find out what's going on. But planning haven't received anything in terms of what they're planning to do there. They've just put in a licensing application, which is a very bizarre way around of doing it. Um, good evening, Innocent. Uh, nice to see you on the live feed as well. Um, any other questions? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, last one from me. You can ask as many questions as you want, Ricky. It's the entire idea of this. Um, uh, Bradford uh, Highway since discovering a one of the plans for second to digital. Uh, uh, yes, we are. We are doing lots of it. Um, uh, uh, I have received so many emails about it. It's untrue. Um, so in terms of the plan, so the government has released uh, a two billion pound fund to support this. Uh, we have aspirations as a council anyway to have around 800,000 kilometres of dedicated cycleway uh, here in Leeds. Anyway, we're about 200,000 into it, if I remember off the top of my head. Um, we have already begun uh, putting in temporary um, extensions to footways in the city centre. Uh, I cover half the city centre, so there's quite a bit that's gone into the world. I can't remember what they're called, but they're, they're putting up these reflector pole things to do the same for cycle lanes on some of the major routes. Uh, I received an email two days ago um, about uh, additional spots in the world around some of the shopping districts where they've got some concerns and what they think they can look at doing in there. We have literally just launched today, and I will put a link in this probably at the end of the feed, to a suggestions page where we want you, the good people of uh, the city, to literally tell us your suggestions of where you want maybe additional cycle lanes uh, temporarily going on to uh, permanently. Um, so, yes, basically in short. Uh, the ones that we were planning to do as part of the Connected Leads project are, are being made now as temporary ones until the permanent work goes in. And we are trying to find as many other temporary solutions as possible. The government is doing a major push on this because realistically public transport won't be at back up to capacity for a very long time. Even at 100% normal service with social distancing rules, they can only take 10% of their normal load. We don't want people literally clogging the roads up and putting air pollution back in. So there is a big drive on this. I will promise you, I will put the link into this uh, at the end of the comments because we really want your ideas on this. There's also been some issues along the uh, riverside uh, around some um, 
gates that restrict access on a canals and rivers trust land. Uh, I've forwarded those on to uh, our Riverside Warden because we have a warden now that is employed to uh, manage city centre Riverside issues and to our colleagues in the highways to speak to uh, them to see what we can do. Uh, right, okay, cheers for that, Gareth. I will pick that up with uh, the planning team as well. I've sent off to planning already that they've been doing stuff and haven't spoken to us. Uh, I'll, I'll add that to the list. So thank you for that clarification. That is really useful. So we've got about 15 minutes left of these uh, new shorter versions. Um, so, um, one of the other big questions I've asked this week on my Facebook page, and I'm going to put the question in while I'm waiting for you to give me some questions, is around benches. Um, the glorious public bench. Now, I'm a great believer in what's called root cause analysis. Basically, you find out the reason why things don't happen and you sort it out. And before lockdown, uh, we had a very clear picture that many parts of our ward, of our community, were not very physically active. They were self-isolating of their own accord because they couldn't travel very far because of their mobility. It had been having a major impact on uh, public uh, health. So one of the questions I've been asking this week, and thank you so much to everyone that's put their comments, is where do we need benches? Um, it's a simple thing in the end, but if you can only walk, say, I'll give you an example. If you live on the Rochford estate near Morrison's in Hunslet, and you live in the Sussex part of it, actually, Morrison's is quite a walking distance. And if you can only walk 100 metres before you need a breather, Morrison's might as well be on the other side of the planet. So this is what we're talking about. So if anyone's got any ideas about where they think it'll be really good to put some benches, please let me know. They are a £1,000 a pop, but potentially it will mean a lot of people in our communities who may be uh, elder with mobility problems, have physical disabilities, or maybe just got loads of kids they're having to take to school and back or on the shopping run, it gives them a place to sit down. So please do let me know about them. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions while we wait. Uh, Neville Street, uh, I've put a post, a uh, comment about this uh, on my Facebook tonight actually. What was happening at Neville Street was, um, I don't know the technical term, so I'm just going to say gas works, but basically there was a corroded pipe and um, Northern Gas Works had to go in and basically uh, repair it effectively. Those roadworks have now ceased on that bit of uh, Neville Street under the dark arches, but there's some further works towards Sovereign Street. Um, so there are some lane restrictions there. But basically it was a, a gas pipe issue. So uh, they were really concerned that the pipes were really corroded and they also didn't want them to have a leak. Uh, let's have a look. Is there anything else? Let's have a look. Yeah, cheers for that, Karen. Yeah, I'd be very interested in some benches between the Oval and the Hunslet Club. Um, it's something. It's not going to be this week's question, and I'm not going to spoil the excitement of what this week's question is going to be. You'll have to wait for it on Sunday. Um, but uh, it's going to be one of my questions in a couple of weeks' time around... And actually, I'm not going to say that because I can spoil it, but basically it's something environmental. So benches fit very well with that conversation. But I'm not going to spoil my, my, uh, my geeky surprise of what random questions I'm going to ask you. Um, so that's fine. Any other issues? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, uh, we are aware of Hunslet Morrison's. Um, really interesting. Uh, I had a meeting with the police a couple of days ago. Um, and we did raise the, the complaints people had had about Morrison's. So for those of you who don't shop the Hunslet Morrisons, uh, we were getting quite a lot of complaints around social distancing not being applied for, uh, not being applied for, not being followed. Um, the police have had conversations with Hunslet Morrisons and they feel that Hunslet Morrisons is doing the best that it can. Uh, they were also in the press yesterday. And I do know it's from looking at some of the community Facebook groups in the area that Queuing seems to have been a little bit better in Morrison, so I don't know if uh, the 
the impact of conversations uh, from West Yorkshire Police or the press or a mixture of things have, have all had uh, that. Yes, Michael, that is um, my partner's tree, uh, one of many trees in the house. Uh, we've actually got six trees outside, or is it five? No, it's five trees outside that were growing, which are fruit trees. And we've got two baby trees in the house that is growing, and then this one, which was donated by a friend. Um, we've got lots of plants in this house. One day I'll count them all. And uh, He's more of the plant person than I am, but I, I, I get there. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I will put the link in, Jim, into this post at the end of this because I literally was just reading it just before we started because um, that's one of those things. Um, yes, it will be. So the, the space between, Huns between the Penny Hill Centre and Hunslet Hub uh, Hunslet Hubbin Library, uh, is what we're going to call Hunslet Town Square. Uh, it is an absolute must for me to get this done. Uh, the project's going to cost somewhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred thousand pounds. We've got two hundred thousand of it. The other fifty thousand uh, will be easily got from capital budgets. So. Just to be clear, these are budgets that can only be spent on capital projects, and by capital I mean bricks and mortar. Um, and the vision is very simple, to have a town square for Hunslet and to marry the Penny Hill Centre and the Civic Centre, which is the library and the hub, into a communal space in the middle. Uh, we've got a really great partnership going with the Involve Centre, which we're supporting with some grant money because they have an aspiration of becoming a community-led centre, uh, as well as an education division. So we'll have the Penny Hill Centre, we'll have the small, the dentist, uh, we'll have the, the hub and the library, and then uh, via our partners are involved a community centre with the new playground that we're uh, upgrading around the quarter. All in total, the investment between the hub, the new city, uh, new town square, Warpoint, is around about a million pounds to completely revitalize this part of Hunslet. Um, and it very much connects to our plans uh, around how we're hopefully, subject to the land survey, um, going to guarantee the long-term survival of Hunslet St Mary's Spire. And, you know, I made it very clear when I got elected um, all those years ago now of two, that I wanted significant investment in public ground space in Hunslet and I hope I'm delivering on that. So um, yes, it is still going to get redeveloped. Uh, I haven't seen the final design yet, uh, which will then go to consultation. But yes, it will happen. It is the last thing I do. Um, let's have a look. Any other questions? Uh, this one's come on WhatsApp. Um, it's about park improvements in the city centre. So there's there's three that I suppose are relevant to Hunslet and Riverside residents. Um, there's obviously City Park, which is the big, big park. Um, that's going to be as part of the South Bank. Um, that's well progressing phase one. Um, of the plan of that thinks I've gone to plans or is about to go to plans panel. Um, there is uh, the aspiration for a pocket park on the little bit of land uh, between um, Whitehall waterfront with the air, the wall, the canal and the bank. So on that little bit in between the river and the canal, we have an aspiration uh, to build a park uh, there. For residents, it's been a big ask for that part of the city. Uh, we've got most of the money. We've just put in a bid from the money from somewhere else, and that project will be led by Groundworks if we get all of the money. Uh, there are some conversations around how to redevelop what's called Penny Pocket Park. Now, this is just in front of the Minster, uh, next to the railway line, and it crosses two walls. So there's a little bit in Hunslet and Riverside. There's a little bit in Little London Woodhouse Wall. So there are some conversations about how we do that for the city centre. And uh, one of my projects I really want to do, and this is for H2010 residents further down Hunslet Riverside, is the island, uh, Knostrop Island, uh, which is leased by Leeds City Council 
uh, under the flood alleviation scheme, I have an aspiration of turning that into a much more usable space. Uh, we've got one bench there, one bench isn't really good enough, uh, but I have aspirations for that and I have actually, I've got offices looking at plans and how much that will cost. Um, quite interested in how we can tie that with some of the environmental work being done, particularly with uh, birds returning there. Um, so we've got five minutes left. Let's see if there's any other questions people want to ask me. Uh, or any or any comments uh, people want to give you. It doesn't have to be questions. You can tell me I'm doing a rubbish job if you want. Uh, please don't. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> What happened to my mobile phone? Right. Um, yeah. Uh, most of you know I have a I have a I have a basset hound, Peggy, and um, as I was being my normal self, uh, letting the dog out to have a walk in the garden, and I had the phone in my hand, and she decided she uh, she wanted to say hello, and uh, I I smashed my lovely smartphone into pieces. And then had the the absolute horror of hearing it beep at me all day long as I kept getting messages that I couldn't answer. Uh, at three o'clock, no sorry, two o'clock today, I had my new phone which I'm live streaming this delivered to me and I have never been so happy in my life. And not having a phone for 24 hours has been traumatic. Uh, Peggy is, is, is not as oblivious to the, the pain and she's calls me but this is life. But that's that's the tragic story of my mobile phone. Um, interesting, Jim. So about the the the, the public toilets. So on that site, there's already public toilets. Uh, sorry, just to, for people's Jim's question, it's about the redevelopment of the site in uh, between uh, Penny Hill Centre and uh, the hub. So the inkling is at the moment the the two options. We can either reopen those public toilets and use them as public toilets. All the plumbing still there, just need reworking. Though we have an aspiration of maybe turning that into actually some, some additional outside shops uh, with some containers either side, and that can be the service section for them. Uh, and the reason for that is we, we've been in discussion with the Penny Hill Centre owner about whether they'd like to do a joint uh, business startup venture there. So basically we'd have some container sh shops and basically we would rent them at nominal or no cost to start up businesses in the area who who need a space to start getting customers before they expand. Uh, at, at which point we would then maybe enhance the option of uh, the toilets in the hub and maybe the involved centre. Um, so there are a couple of options. Uh, either we restore those ones, but we'll lose that as having as a service area for the, the idea of these little container startup shops. Or we enhance the offer uh, at the hub uh, by supplementing that with an offer at the involved centre uh, who have indicated they're happy to have their facility used while it's open. So there are a couple of options. I think having some form of public toilet access there that isn't connected to the hub and to the Penny Hill Centre is a good idea. And I think we just need to uh, look at that really really carefully because there's obviously hygiene and control issues etc with public toilets which unless you have a guard on them is really really difficult i will pass on your hugs brenda to peggy uh, she was not my most favorite um canine yesterday i must admit um i uh i gave some stern looks after i cried profusely at the destruction of my phone um and uh, apparently i was heard cursing quite heavily uh, of course i would never do that in the life because that'd be completely unprofessional um right we've got a minute to go so final pitch from me then um i will put into the comments the link to the um suggestion uh website about where you might want uh extended public footpaths or new cycle lanes uh in the links already in a link to next week's guest q a on thursday with hillary ben mp uh there's a link within that event uh, for you to send your questions in advance or you can ask them on the night uh, on the live feed but I can't guarantee I'll get through all of them uh, there's obviously my live uh, feed next week as normal on Friday so please do uh, endeavour to join and ask me lots of questions I'm sure we'll get lots more updates over the next week from the government 
And finally, from me, uh, if you haven't already done so, uh, just so that you do get um, updates and alerts about what I'm doing and all the information in the world, I've just put in a picture, or I'm going to put in a picture, it won't let me, I'll do it in a second, of how to follow my page so that you continue to get uh, regular updates. Other than that, thank you for listening. Have a safe and uh, good weekend, and I'll see you uh, online and hopefully sometime uh, out and about in the world. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye.